Ramfest Radio on RamfestRadio.com. We're, we're not number one. God is. God is. We may not be the best, but our purpose, purpose is to lead you to the best. Jesus Christ. Christ. www.ramfestradio.com. Old school to new school. Classics to exclusives. Gospel, hip hop, music, and videos. Live video interviews Monday nights at 8 p.m. Monday nights at 8 p.m. Watch. 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 Learn. Learn. Love. Love. Support. Support. <laughs> Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. 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 to Rap Fest Radio, rapfestradio.com. We are live here. If you're watching us, we encourage you to join the chat room where you can have any questions answered. Well, any question we can answer, we will answer for you. <laughs> uh, with our guests, you just finished checking out a video that I'm starting to fall in love with already, the beat is sick, East Coast hip hop, you know that's my heart right there. Jafia Life, the realest. Uh, props to Jafia Life, hit me up. Let me know what's going on, Jafia, it's been a while. Um, 
But we're excited always if you have a good video, song, something you want played on the air, just make sure you hit us up. Go to rapfestradio.com. All the details are there. And you can send your music to us or your video link, and we'll make sure that we get you up on the air. Tonight, we're excited. First of all, That's I have right. my beautiful wife, Alice, here. She's going to be on the air. Hey, there. Hi, there. Hey. Oh, <laughs> um, but we have, we have a brother that has been featured on five albums, uh, ministered in maybe 20, 30, 40, probably 50 concerts throughout the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, basically like a mini tour. We've done a lot of street ministry together. Mm -hmm. He's, um, there's been a play that basically featured about his life. Right in the middle, yeah. And all of this, and he's not even a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> he's been on more albums than some rappers I know, right? <laughs> That's true. We have John Lopez, one of the original storytellers from Crossroads Tabernacles. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank Welcome. You, thank you, thank Welcome. You. John, John is, that's my man right there. If, if you listen to any of the storyteller CDs from back in the days that featured Sons of God, Brothers Incorporated for the Lord, right. uh, Lord's Ambassador, Brother E. Brother e. e. Yeah. Uh, and then Eric we also e. had, yeah, Eric E. and Baron. Right. right. And then we had uh, Big D Big as D. well. That's Frankie right. Cutlass was Frankie on some Cutlass, of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, all of those albums. Who else? Solomon, Solomon, Solomon Star, Star yes. as well. You, P -O -W -O. And P.O.W. P -O -W -O. was in the beginning. Oh, my Remember that? To my oh, right. oh, Christian yeah. sister will be moving. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we used to mess with him all the time. Step into my right. Yeah. No, step into <laughs> my right. The Christian sister. <laughs> <laughs> he was like crazy. Cypress Hill looking like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wow, wow, P.O. Dope, that's yeah, good, wow. huh? See, I remember something. Yeah. going way back. But yeah, yeah. John, John was on all five of those CDs. Storytellers, Hip Hop Live, The Man, Paracletos, Strong as Death, yes. my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but before we go into your ministry and everything, you know, take an opportunity, introduce yourself to our peoples that are watching. Okay, uh, my name is John Lopez. God bless you. I'm honored to be here with Bert and Alice. And I just want to say that, you know, Serving God, he, he takes you to places where you don't even know. Sometimes they're mountain experiences, valley low experiences, but through it all, he's, he, he keeps his promise and he Amen. watches us through it, you know. And I'm not a rapper, I can't rap. But, Please uh, don't. But I, got a, but I got a story to tell. You know? <laughs> I got a story to tell. And uh, I just want to introduce myself. I'm a correction officer. Wow. He uses a drug dealer to become a correction officer back in the days. And God opened up that opportunity. And uh, as a CEO, I'm able to have a key to enter into the facilities. And now being able to bring churches to come in and minister to the laws. Mm. Where I should have been on the other side of the gate. He wow. says, okay, I'm not going to let you go to jail. But... Um, I'm going to bring you in so you can bring my people in to minister to right. the uh, lost generation. Basically, that's what I do. Amen, amen. amen. If you guys remember, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about uh, some of our, our ministry going to Rikers Island to minister to some of the young people there. And we took Hee Sun Lee with us, who then, she came on the air to talk about the experience. Well, John is the, the, the head of that ministry, or he's the one that put it together. Yes. You know, worked yes. closely with us, and we were really excited to be there. Yeah. Uh, now, you're a correction officer, so you work there. Yes. You know, we went one day, six hours, whatever. We, it was hot. It was crazy hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh that. Gosh, there wasn't was... enough water. Right, that. right. But it was, no, it was a lot of water. But it was really hot. But we left. Yes. You get to go back. Right, right. What's right. the what's the real feedback? Because we could say, oh, those kids were blessed. They were touched. Well, they were, but you get to go back. And yeah, see. well, the real feedback is that when, we, when I go back, you know, the, the kids look at you like, you know, what else you got, John? Mm -hmm. And I, I remind them that all I have is uh, that I introduce them to Christ. And that, you know, when they go back to the dorm setting or the cell setting, that, you know, the most beautiful thing about prisons and, and jails, beautiful thing, is that there's Bibles all over the place. And I call them little gems. And I tell them, you need to pick up that gem and open it up and let it shine so your eyes can be opened. And basically, I lead them to reading the Word of God, you know, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or getting down to the chapel services where they'll connect with the chaplain and build a relationship with other brothers in there so that they can grow in the Word of God, you know? Because my, my role is to plant the seed, and now they're looking, 
you know, and there are people there. They, they, you know, they're guys that are in prison who love Jesus Christ. I mean, really sold down and really have had a true transformation in in Christ and are looking when they get out to stay uh, stay connected to Christ. So I tell them look for those kind of people. And I go back to the dorms and they see me. They go, Lopez, yo, when you coming back again, man? Come, when you bringing bird and when you bringing it? I said, listen, you know, it's you know for a season. Let me work on that again, and uh, that's the, that's what goes on. So what is the reaction of the other correction officers and your co-workers because yeah. basically you know and we went to work and just started preaching Jesus the way we did at the prison a lot of us would either get fired or they'd yeah. be looking at us like you freak stay to the side well, well you know I, I get mixed mixed uh, comments you know you have one group ah uh, you know you know why why are you gonna talk to them about Jesus you know uh, they're not gonna listen they're not you know they're not gonna pay attention and then I got that other group that would say you know I gotta respect you you know, here you are holding on a shield. You know, you're doing this on your own time. You're coming into the jails and you're bringing a message of hope. I, I respect you for that, you know, nice. and, you, and you're being vulnerable too. And uh, I, I really see that God is real in your life. You know, some, some of them come to me and say, can you pray for my son? Can you pray for my daughter? Can you pray for my marriage? You know, and that, that goes on. That's been going on for the last 15 years. You know, right. that's what we deal with. Yeah. It's, like, it's interesting because when, when we went, you know, we had that core group of young, because it was yes. ages, what, 14, 16, 16, 17, 18. 18. So it's really young. They're really, really young kids, yeah, yes. you know. So I was impacted by the fact that they were so young and they're in this predicament, you yeah. know, and, and it affected me. And, and I think that any youth pastor out there that has a youth group before them, oh, yeah. I think it would be an experience because it will change the way you minister to you. Oh, yes. If you go into the prison ministries and, and you go in there and you see that what you do is so serious because you can impact a youth so much that they won't be in that predicament. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think I encourage if there's any youth pastors out there that are listening, right. you know, connect with us and we'll connect you to, yes. to John, you know, and, and you can go in there and, and maybe you don't want to be the vocal up front because I was very much in the background because it's, it's a new experience. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. But if you're just there in the background and, and we got to talk to them and, and you just see it, it's, it breaks your heart. It brings your ministry to a different level and, and you see things differently. I think, I think of uh, Sofrito. Sofrito. Sof oh, yeah, Sofrito. Yeah. Sofrito, <laughs> Jeff, you know, John called him Sofrito. So, Sofrito has sent, me, sent us a text afterwards and he says, I will never look at my young people the same way again. Yeah. And that's what, that's what you want. That's yeah. the impact you want. Well, you know, being, being in there, the, uh, what, what broke my heart, or actually what turned my heart to work with the young people in, in the incarcerated community was uh, my second, about my fourth year in corrections, I was working in my hand courts, and there was a 16-year-old who hanged up on me. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, uh, you know, he was from, uh, went from group home to group home to group home, and, um, you know, he just came out the courtroom, and, you know, they just you know, gave him a big sentence, and I put him inside the cell and went back to do my work, and they screamed out, Lopez, 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 you need to come around this corner. You need to come to the cell. And I said, wait a minute. They said, Lopez, you better come. So I ran. The other adolescents were, you know, calling me because they, they didn't even want to come down because the guy was big. So he had a loose around his neck, and um, he was about 6'6", six, six, and he was 17 years old. And I remember I went and I just grabbed my keys. I opened up the pen door, took out my nylon knife, and I'm ripping the rope from his neck. He falls down on the floor and he's just crying, crying. And I and I and I said, "Man, you got a lot to live. And you got a lot to live for." He says, "No, I don't. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. My family rejects me. I've been from group home to group home. What does it make? It doesn't make sense." And I remember he was sitting down low. He was so tall. His knees were real high. And then. You know, he had like something under his shirt, and then I go, "What do you, what do you got under your shirt?" He pulled out a book, and it says, "Jesus brings hope." Oh. And I said, "You got the answer right there," you know. And I started talking to him and ministering. To, I sat, I sat there with him for about two hours. Wow. My partners just took over my my position, my post, and I just spoke into his life. The kid cried on my shoulder. You know, what do you do as an officer? How do you? You know he's still going to be in a cell, but I knew one thing, that I can introduce him to Christ. We, right. we, we prayed together, and he gave his life to the Lord. He continued giving his life to the Lord. Wow. He eventually got seven years, but I remember he came back to me. He says, I want to thank you, Lopez, because I'm not alone now. 
I know I'm not alone. Nice. And I'm finding that out every day. So from that day forward, I made it my mission while I'm in correction to get guys like you, ladies like yourselves, and other churches throughout the, you know, the New York City area and bring them into the facilities to bring hope to these young men. Yeah, that's, you know? that's important. And it's so hard, right? Because you and I were, were commenting where you know, you're going in there to these kids that you could see in their eyes that they've lost all hope. Yeah. You just see it. I mean, the conversation we had with one of the boys, you know, no matter what we asked, all he kept repeating is, I just want to go home. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't even look at us. He was like so broken. I just want to go home. What's your favorite music? I just want to go home. Right, right. You know, right. no matter what we asked him. Yeah. You know, and, and we're there presenting this hope and presenting this and mm -hmm. presenting them. And some of them are so receptive. But then, you know, they're going back to the same thing. It's not like when you're in church and you do a calling. Mm -hmm. You know, they can come back to the church. Right. You know, and you can continue seeing them. But, you know, you got to offer them something and then you're like, you, you leave. And we leave, that's right. It's, it's so hard. You know, prison ministry is so hard, but... Yeah. It's it's so hard and it's so rewarding. Yeah, yeah you know, it's definitely. like it's like so different, so weird. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. I mean, and unfortunately, and I think you probably experienced this most. It's not enough people doing it. Not enough. We we um we we struggle with it. You know, um, you gotta you gotta have thick skin. You know, it's it's you know the ones that really love the Lord because there are so many roadblocks in getting in. You know, first you got to get the ID. Then you got to deal with nasty officers. Then you got to deal deal with the bus ride. Then you got to wait for the escort to bring the. Actually, the bus ride was fun. Well, well you know, it was easy because I got the bus. And I brought it in, you know, but uh, you know, there's rob buses. There's just but then there are those that are willing to to hurdle all those you know those roadblocks. And they come in and they and they stay committed 15 20 30 years mm. month uh, month after month after month month after month and they pick a day and they committed to that i mean easter christmas thanksgiving wow. they're there you know wow. and, let, and let's be real prison ministry is not for everybody it's not no, it's not it's not for everybody it's not it's if you not. have a little bit of doubt about if you should be there or not just keep praying until you you're it's sure for but don't let your fear stop you don't let your fear stop you but you're you not know, for nothing right I, I'm, I'm like a chicken when right. it comes to prison ministry <laughs> i'm gonna be totally honest with you you know i was like bert you better not leave my side <laughs> i was like if there's a prison riot you better be by my side i don't want to be locked up in here so, you know there's all these because right. you know it's just it's it's not an easy lock up yeah, yeah. <laughs> too much lock up bro but yeah. it's 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 a different experience than what we used to. You know, we're used to you go into a room, you can come out of the room wherever you want. Yeah. You're a visitor in that jail. You don't come out even if you're a visitor. That's right. As you will. You right. have to get permission for them to open the door. And every That's time right. you walk in, they lock a door That's behind right. you. Exactly. You know, it's 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 a totally different, different environment. Yes. But I think the the reward of it, you know, and, and what you get out of it. Yeah. I, I think it's it's so worth it. Yeah. Right. But there there's no limit to what can be done in prison ministry. Though, no limit. Right? There's no limit. Explain a little bit of what, what did the storytellers used to do for prison ministry? Oh, my Lord. We used to, we used to go in and um, we, used, we used to come with the rappers. We would come with the musicians. We would come into the, into the jail. Um, let's, for instance, R&DC. We would pack, the, we would pack the, uh, the gym with about maybe 500 to 600 wow. inmates. And we had a set list, you know, we would do the rap songs and then maybe Keith would share his testimony, I would share my testimony. And at the end, we would have this amazing altar call, an amazing altar call. I mean, these guys would come up crying and, and they wouldn't let us go. And, yo, oh man, I didn't know that you could use right. words through the genre of hip hop wow. and, and honor God. I mean, I've never heard it, you know, and then uh, we would have uh, Master Bird or Sir Bug out <laughs> over here, you know, just ad lib, you know, he would just take a scripture and pull a guy out of the crowd and speak right into his life. Kids start crying and give his life right there on the spot. We didn't even have to preach, you know, it was just, it was just a group of young men who were passionate about bringing the gospel in the genre of hip hop. And right, you know, the, right. the, the message was always gospel truth. And I don't care who they. I mean, we were we were in sync with, with the context of what they what they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And it takes it a lot amazing. of work. You know, it yeah. takes a lot of work. If, if you are considering doing prison ministry, be prepared to put in a lot of work. I mean, yeah. thank God for people like Jose and Triple J Audio. Yeah, they mm -hmm. aced us. They came out with a sound system. Oh, the kids were loving the yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, had a subwoofer and all in prison. Come on, give me yeah, a break. Yeah, <laughs> you know who yeah. does that? Thirty thirty split. Yeah. We had everything. Yeah, everything. Wow. Everything was set up. You know, and all the volunteers that came out. But it's a lot of work. Even yes. I think of he's somebody who had to drive like 
an hour and a half from Staten Island to get there and leave yeah. her baby behind and go. It's all day. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a lot of work. But Alice said it, it's rewarding. It is rewarding. You know, and what, what makes you tick when you're there is the fact that there's hope for these kids. Still. There is yes. hope. You know. Mm -hmm. And now, you have a really tough testimony, which... Yeah. I never get tired of hearing right, it right, because right. I know how real it is. I, I, you know, I've heard you say it so much. I probably know all the lines of right, it. Right, you know, right, right. Uh, that's where we get the angry Puerto Rican yeah, from, yeah, right? Exactly. But um, <laughs> how, how, how? What amazes me most is that what is it? 15, 15 or more years later, that testimony is still so powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and. I mean, maybe you want to share a little bit of, of, of your testimony, yeah. but we have some time here. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, um, you know, we, me and my brother, we sold drugs. We, we came from a background where my mother was a heroin addict, and my father, you know, just broke out from home, and the streets was my father, basically. And mm -hmm. we grew up, you know, we grew up learning, you know, how to sell drugs. We, we grew up watching the stick-up kids. We grew up watching the pimp. We, we, that, that was the lifestyle. You know, we came home late. 11, 12 o'clock, we were the kind of kids, you know, like, you know, uh, misfits, the misfits that were, didn't want to be home because when you came home, you had to deal with the reality of, of your mom who was high on drugs all the time or, or on alcohol. You know, I was better off in the streets. And, and that, that became a vicious cycle all the way up till I was, I was about maybe 13 years old. You know, and then as you get older, we, we started getting high on weed. And, and the only thing we knew was the block. So you grow up in the block and you know, I didn't see no role model like a doctor coming in. How you doing, uh, Mr. Lopez? You need to go to school. No, it was like, you know, get out of here, you know. We would go into the stores, they would look at us like if we were thieves. Um, we would be out in the streets, the cop would look at us like drug dealers. I mean, the mindset, you know. So that, that whole culture evolved my core values. And part of my core values was to be a drug dealer. I said, okay, this is what society has given me. Well, I'm going to get good at this. And as me and my brother got... I got a little older in 1980, 1981, the crack epidemic hit the hood. We learned how to cook crack with baking powder. And uh, we learned how to do it. We knew how to get an ounce. And then, you know, from a half an ounce to an ounce, two ounces, three ounces, 16 ounces to a half a key to the key. We knew how to spit the money, break it down. And then we, block, you know, we went from riding around in BMX bikes to riding around in motorcycles to getting Jeeps to getting fast cars to buying houses in Puerto Rico, boats. It just, we just blew up because we knew the streets. And we knew what it meant. You put fear on the competition. You put fear on the neighborhood. You watch the cops. You move on. You move on anybody, and you get your money. You respect is everything, and that's how it went. It went like that for we had an eight-year run. But like anything, there's always a season, mm -hmm. and there was a time where God had to call us out and call me out. And they put a contract hit and they killed my brother. You know, he had stepped out of the game and went to Puerto Rico. You know, to get his life together. And, and, you know, he gave the block away. You know, I just became a CEO, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know how I got that job. You know what I'm saying? I was on, you we'll know, save that for another yeah, show. Yeah, we'll save that for another show. But, but you know, you know it, it was time. It was like, okay, you know, okay. You know, what, what else does life have to offer? So he came back to New York because the crew wasn't, you know, he left the crew with, with, the, with the block, but they didn't know how to hustle. And I wasn't going to counsel anymore. That's it. It was over. You know, and he came back, and they put a contract contract hit on my brother they brought a guy from out of town and um they were waiting for him and that night i even looked at the kid because i was so entrenched in the neighborhood that i knew when there was a new kid in the neighborhood who didn't yeah. fit in yeah. i knew if he was hispanic or black that he wasn't from the neighborhood because i was from the street i always i paid attention it was your house yeah it your was house. My, exactly it was my hood mm -hmm. and what eventually happened was that they um there was one kid that was under a tree i remember on 100 uh, 101st street uh, it's in Third Avenue, there's uh, Washington Projects by the parking lot. He was on the tree. He had a hoodie, Carhartt mask, Carhartt jacket, Carhartt pants, Timberland boots. And he was standing under the tree. And my brother was in the car. And I said, who's that kid over there? And the kid, you know, was, you know, was very suspicious. My brother said, no, he's a lookout for the little drug. Dealer. I said, but the cops are over here. Why is he in the block, you know, in the shadow? Because he looked too, for me, that was too suspicious. So I walked over to him. And I looked at him, and I gave him that look like, I'm watching you. You know, then we jumped in the car and left. That was the same kid that ran up on my brother wow. as soon as I left and shot him in the chest one time, you know, twice in the chest, once in the face. And, 
And that's, it, that's, that's all she wrote. My whole world fell apart. I remember coming back to the block, there was blood on the floor, it was taped off, and I mean, I'm, you know, I tasted the blood. I said, I'm gonna kill this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely take his life. And that whole night was, you know, you know, thinking about it now, you, you just, you, you know, the rage, the anger, the frustration. And I remember going back into my apartment and arguing with God. I was arguing with God. You know, started, you know, just arguing with him. And my cousin calls me on the phone and he says, uh, Chino, I know what you're gonna do, man. You're gonna take revenge. You're gonna go kill somebody. And the very first verse I memorized was Romans chapter 12, verse 19, the one that my cousin gave me. It says, Vengeance is mine, save the Lord. I will repay. Mm -hmm. And he said, John, put it in God's hands. I hung up the phone on him. I got down on my knees and I started arguing with God. And I said, Where were you when I needed a father? Where were you when my mother was shooting heroin and I used to have to walk her home from 110th Street and Lexington Avenue all the way to 99th Street? Where were you when, when I needed guidance? Where I was so angry at him. Mm. And I remember falling asleep on the floor thinking the heavens was gonna open up and God was gonna talk, mm. but that didn't happen. And uh, I remember saying to God, I said, Lord, if you're for real, reveal to me your justice and your love and I promise there'll be no more bloodshed. And God used a crackhead to minister to me. It wasn't a pastor. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't a you know preacher or an evangelist. It was a crackhead. Two days later, we're at the funeral home, and a crackhead comes walking in, and he makes this big scene. He was high on crack, and he says, "John, I know where the guy is that killed your brother." And um, that was the first time that I heard God speak into my heart because I had to make a very important decision that day. And that day, it was either go and get revenge or trust God. And at that moment, the Lord put in my heart and says, John, now you make a decision. Either you go and, and take revenge and deal with the consequences or put it in my hands and let me show you my love and my justice. Mm -hmm. And what I did was the hardest decision. I trusted God for that. Uh, we ended up, you know, going a different route. And uh, next, you know, that's what she wrote, man. Since 1993, March 8th, I've been serving the Lord, man. That's wow. amazing. And never, never look back. Do you ever, yeah, I mean, because I know you, you shared your testimony right. with storytellers for many years yeah. in different places, even in the prison. I do it in prison, too, all the time. Do you, do you ever fear, like, you know, my job's in, this, in this, jeopardy this, here? For saying I this? can retire anytime I want now. Okay. I got my 20 in. But people have told me that. And I said, you know what, Lord? If it's gonna, if if I can win one, if there's a Nikki Cruz out there, mm. if there's a John Lopez out there, is if there's a Bert, if there's a you know a brother E out there that he can hear my story, and know that the God I serve is a real God, you know, not not a church God, not a, and I'm not knocking church. I thank yeah, God yeah. for church, right. please. I'm not knocking church, but a God that can reach out into the hood and get a John Lopez from the street corner, mm. lost and bondage wrapped up in a lifestyle that that's that's crazy if he can pull me out and i can share that with a kid who's locked up in c74 c uh c73 c95 any one of those jails and i can let them know listen the same god that saved my life is the same god that can get you out of jail turn your life around and you never have to come back mm -hmm. and and that's that's why i don't care I, listen i don't care and god has shielded me throughout Amen. all the years behind Amen. that god. and it's 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 like as he's talking, I'm thinking it's like this scenario was years ago. Yeah. But this scenario repeats itself over and over, over, over and with yeah. different characters, different names. But it's the same. You know, you go to these neighborhoods that there's no hope in some of these neighborhoods. Yeah. And, you know, they, kids don't go further than that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you see the same thing happening. And, you know, I think it's our responsibility as Christians that we go to these neighborhoods, you know, forget about the protection of the four walls of the church. Yeah. Like you say, church is great, but you're not gonna get those people into church. No. The chances of you walking into a church at that age. Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> I went, I went, the only time I went to church before I got saved was when somebody died or somebody got married. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and the only thing I knew about church was a statue on a cross. Yeah. That's it. You know, That's so, it. you know, the probability of someone, you know, like you now, now back then going into a church, is slim to none. Yeah. So what do we do? Do we stay in the protection of the four walls mm -hmm. and preach to the people that are saved already and waste, not waste, but 
preach the message to people that are already right. saved, or do we go out and get that one? Well, the, the yeah, the, the beauty of the beauty of the church is that you know people do get disciples. You know, yes. they get disciples and they learn, but then there are those that God raises up to go out. To go out. You know, and uh, we have to be, I believe that the church has to be cognizant and discernful yes. that when God raises one up like that, that they will support, provide, mm -hmm. and, and let that let that gift be mm -hmm. used, whether it's, it's in the urban context, whether it's in a prison context, whether it, whatever context it is, that we immobilize, like a Nikki Cruz, where God mm. had raised him up. You know what I mean? And and uh, the pastor that just recently died from uh, Times Square Church, what's his name, the general? Oh, yeah, um, I, Wilkerson. Yeah, Wilkerson. David Wilkerson, Wilkerson, who just said, go, right. go and do it. And you know, right. we, we have to, we, we have to uh, pay attention for the next generation of That's those right. young men that That's God is raising absolutely. up, pour into them and absolutely. bless them, you know, because they're out there. They're all out That's there, right. you, know? you know? And rap, rap is an awesome forum to reach these people, you know? You know, and, and I'm talking now to the rappers, you know, with concerts and, and all of this, it's all great. Selling your t-shirts, selling your products. I'm not knocking it because you need that to continue your ministry. Right. But if you don't pour out a little bit of yourself to go out in the street and rap in the street and reach the streets, I'm telling you, you're doing a disservice to your ministry. Mm. Because God has given you a tool that the street's attracted to because you're speaking their language. Yeah. It's not a preacher coming with a Bible in a corner with a bullhorn speaking. Right. Not that that's effective. Right. But that person will not attract the attention that a rapper will. Yeah. Yeah. The crowd that a rapper will. So if rappers, if you are not doing street ministry, I'm telling you, you're doing a disservice to your ministry right. and you're cutting yourself short of a blessing from God. And it's, wow. it's not only rappers, it's it's, it's, every, it's all ministries. Yeah. I mean, you could be a singer, a dancer, an artist, but think of the lost, you know, and, and the, let's say you're scared of going to your street, invite the street to your church, invite the street to your community yeah. center, minister to them there. Or, you know, every once in a while, offer something different to your neighborhood. Yeah. You know, that, that's the important part. You know what? We're going to go into this video called Work by Cannon, and then we're going to come back and speak more with John Lopez because we want to find out some of his experiences working with Nikki Cruz and yeah. storytellers. We did some hidden run ministries back in the day. We need to do that again. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we have Nikki Cruz coming for Rap yes, this yes, year. Yes. So we want to let people know what they're, what they could be, you know, what, what to prepare for for yes. this year's Rap Fest. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with more. This is Canon. The video is called Work here at Rap Fest Radio, rapfestradio.com. Check it out. Cause 
Listening to Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. That was work by Cannon here on Rap Fest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. Yo, if you're missing out on all these videos, you know you can go to HolyCulture.net, RapZilla.com, TheSouth.com, SpiritHipHop.com. There's so many other websites and resources out there. There's no need for you to be stuck on all this negative garbage that's out there. That's uh, right. There's a lot of great music out there for you to listen to. And naturally, thank you to HolyCulture.net. They're the ones that host our podcast, but you can get it there every week, and as well as many other things. You know, a lot of music. They just revamped their whole site. looks That's really great. great. And another shout-out to Grateful Apparel, one of our sponsors as well, that does the T-shirts for Rap Fest and stuff like that. And you can listen um, to actual rap, not bleeps happening. And no, no, not being able no to bleeps. listen to the whole thing because like, there's so many bleeps. Like the BET Awards. It was ridiculous. Like, <laughs> it was like you couldn't hear. All you heard was, was the like music. A, and ble- what are you saying? It was like saying? a flute concert. <laughs> it was horrible, horrible, horrible. I don't know why I mentioned that. I don't know. Because we were talking about it before. I wasn't. Because we don't have a bleep button for her. We don't have a bleep button for you. That's right. We're going to get one, though. We have the applause. That's all we have. But uh, let's go to some quick announcements before we continue. Yeah. First announcement. Prayer Walk. Rap Fest has partnered with God Belongs on My City. This is the first time we do this. We're going to do a massive prayer walk on August 4th. Now, we always do our prayer walk, but it's usually a small crowd of staff, like 15, 20 people. Uh, this year, we're actually looking for hundreds of people to show up. That's right. Uh, you could get your God Belongs in My City t-shirt. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. It's not about just the come. t-shirt. It's about the unity of the body of Christ just coming out. Even if you don't know how to pray, you can still join us, walk with us, and listen to us as we pray. You know, we could encourage you that way. We encourage you, if you're a pastor, youth pastor, or a leader in your church, encourage your church to join us August 4th. It might be something you've been wanting to do with your church, don't know how, don't know when. Join us. We have no problem joining forces. You guys can walk in the front. doesn't matter. We're all doing it for the same mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. So everybody's going to come out August 4th. We're going to meet at the Pathmark parking lot. Some, I know the flyer says uh, Calvary Church, but it's right across the street. So we'll be meeting on 174th Street and Longfellow Avenue at 12 noon. 
And by 12.30, we'll be marching out to the projects, the Bronx River Project. Oh, Africa, yeah, yeah. Africa Bombard and right, all those right, people right. there, you know, that's mm -hmm. their neighborhood. And all into that neighborhood right around the Boys Club that's over mm -hmm. there, the MSG Boys Club. is crazy neighborhood. So that's going to happen on Saturday, August 4th. We encourage you all to join us. Uh, Friday night before Rap Fest, we have a big send-off celebration at Sanctuary Fellowship Church where we'll be encouraging all the artists and mm -hmm. ministries that are going to be participating at Rap Fest. You know, so this is a time for us to just worship together. We have J. Cruz Project, Logos Rima, and Pastor Jacob Bergai from Fuel Student Conference, who's gonna he's our guest speaker for the night. So we're really, really excited about this. That's August 10th at the Sanctuary Fellowship, 1469 St. Peter's Avenue. It's a free event, no charge. All we ask is that you come ready to worship. Mm. Uh, it's not about selling CDs or product that night. It's just worship. Many of the artists that are in town for the event will be there that night. So you do get a chance to meet them. That's cool fellowship. But we're just there to worship that night. Then on August 11th is the big day. Mm. Rap Fest 2012 goes down on August 11th. We're really excited. Mm. Uh, we have a great lineup. We encourage you to go to rapfestinc.com where you can see the full lineup. Everybody's Twitter address is linked to their name so you can follow them, encourage wow. them. Tell them you're looking forward to seeing them at Rap Fest as well. Also, you get to see uh, the vendor area where you can purchase a vendor table. If you have gospel t-shirts or something mm -hmm. price related that you want to display at Rap Fest, you can get a table. Even artists, you can upgrade to a full table. Just check the website. The details are there. But we're really excited. We have K-Drama mm. uh, from Ohio, who's going to be one of our special guests, as well as the rep from Arizona, okay. who is another one of our special guests. And then Mr. Nikki Cruz. Mm. Nikki Cruz is the man. Yes. He's yes. the man. And that's what we want to talk to you about now yeah. because, you know, with storytellers, I think we were the first ones to do a musical production of Nikki Cruz's oh, yes. uh, yeah. uh, Run Baby Run. Run Baby Run. Yes, Run Baby Run. I'll never forget. Run Baby Run. Yeah, run, that's right. That's right. Oh, uh, wow. That threw me back. Wasn't that the rap you did? You can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, yeah. you can Was run, but you can't hide. Mm -hmm. No, you can run, run baby. baby. Oh, you, you can, can run, run, baby. <laughs> oh, you can run, baby. <laughs> run, baby. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But um, you you had like a really close relationship with Nikki when he was in New York. Yeah, it's almost like you were always with him. Yeah, uh, I was assigned. I had the the, the esteemed pleasure to to do the security at Crossroads Tabernacle. Well, that's the first time I got really to meet him. And uh, I remember picking him up in the airport. You know, the guy was as humble as, you know, as humble as apple pie, you know? Picked him up, brought him to the hotel, and then later on we picked him up, brought him to the church. And you know, and, and I, was, I was just checking out his heart. And oh. this, this man is truly a man of God. A dude that God had taken out of the streets you know, for the 50s of that time, you know, they had the gangs and everything, and, and how this gentleman, you know, how this young man who's raised in Puerto Rico comes to New York and, and gets involved with the gangs and fall, falls in love with his gang, and, and how God just miraculously transforms his life mm. is amazing. And here we, here we get to meet him years later with the storytellers, you know, that we're hosting him at Crossroads Tabernacle, Run Baby Run, the whole drama on his life. And, and he's still the, he's a humble man, you know, not, you know, not fake, you know, not putting on a show, you know, I mean, I used to have, have to tell him, Nicky, we, we, we got to go, I got to take you to the front. He goes, John, the front is not important, the people are important. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and he would stand, you know, he walk by, say hello to someone, pray for them, and, and discerning, just knowing the hearts of people, you know, it was I remember, amazing. I remember once, um, one of the nights, Abraham brought his big RV. His oh, yes, yes, yes. He yes, put it yes. out in front. Yes. And, you know, at first glance, you're like, what does Nicky need an RV for? Really? What, what is he? What people didn't realize was who was in that RV with him? The, the head of the Lion uh, Kings. Kings. I was in the trailer. I was in the trailer that day. Mm, yeah. So while we're out here wondering why is he living like a rock star? He ain't living like a rock star. His life is in danger right now <laughs> yes. as he presents the gospel to the head of the Lion that's Kings. Right. That's, that's right. Nikki Cruz. That's right. You know, and that's why we're so excited to have him here with us for Rap Fest. You know, a lot of people, a lot of the younger people might not even know who he is. Yeah. You know, yeah. but a lot of the older people will know and they'll encourage the younger people to show up. Yes. That's right. Yes. You know, and, and that's one thing that really impacted me a lot about Nicky Cruz is no matter, you know, naturally he knew us because we were working with him closely on the, right. on the production. And every time he saw us, he would greet us 
like, hey, how you doing? How's the kids? How's this? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love what you guys are doing. And, and any time after that, till this day, yep. whenever we see him, you know, it's the it's, same greeting. It's the same same greeting. Same it doesn't greeting. change. It's not like, oh, you're not working with me now. I don't need you. Exactly. Same and that's what I love the most. Like when we told him, hey, you think you can do rap fest? And he responded through Karen, through his uh, his assistant. Yeah. He said, Nikki's dying to do Rap Fest again because wow. he did it in 2006 and we had a, a wonderful time with him. Wow. So we're really, really excited to you know, I think what, to One thing that impresses me from Nikki Cruz is that, you know, his his experience was like you said in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Culture has changed. Yeah. The mindset of people have changed. Even the gang world has changed in yeah. perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, and his story still affects the same way it transcends it, it just, transcends generations and you yeah. know and i don't think it's so much the story but the anointing yeah yeah that god has put behind that story mm-hmm. that makes a difference because it's it's you know you really it's be, that story happened before i was born yeah you know it's, and it, it just it still impacts the streets that when he goes to the streets and and he speaks at rap fest that rap fest he did in 2006 yeah. was the most amount of people we've had at a rap fest except the Lord. Mm. Well, you know what it is. The streets no real. Exactly. You know, and you said it too when we went to the prison. Yeah, yeah. Don't come here fake because they'll, they'll, they'll write you out right from the they'll beginning. See, they'll see you right, right through They'll yeah. see right through you. Yeah. You'll be sitting in a corner like this. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm never coming back again. <laughs> right. And, and it's true. And Nikki's real. Nikki has no problem walking up. Again, he's sitting in his RV with a with the head of the Kings. Who does that? Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. And only a person with that authority through Christ that could say, "I got this." Mm-hmm. You know. But um, one of the one of the things we did, and, and we're saying all of this for you, for your benefit as well, because our our goal is to encourage you to do street ministry. Don't wait till every August to come out into the streets. You should be doing street ministry all year long. You know, don't wait for Rap Fest to do it. We, we want to be able to go to other street ministry events as well. Yeah, there's places yeah. to connect. If, if you don't know how to plan a street event, or you don't know how to plan a way to get into the jail, call John. or you just yeah. call John. <laughs> John, you'll do it. Just really. Google, just, just Google, Google John. John. Just, just Google, Google John. John. <laughs> <laughs> call John. That's a good man. You should get a, a website. Yeah. Uh, Googleme.com. Yeah. Uh, but um, one of the, you know another thing that we used to do were the hidden runs. Yeah. Oh. You know, and I think amazing. This will mm-hmm. benefit a lot of ministries now. I, I'm really grateful for God belongs in my city because. Mm-hmm. They're going back to taking it to the streets. Okay. Yes. You know, as if you if you go to GodBeLonesOfMyCity.com, you'll see video after video after video of city after city after city, state state people just by the hundreds and thousands going out into the streets with their God Belongs on My City T-shirt, and it's not a, a protest; it's just a statement mm-hmm. that we're praying for this area. Mm-hmm. You know, and while it's a little different, we did the same thing back in. Wow, in the, in the 90s? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah the I, 90s. I was trying not to say the year, but yeah, <laughs> back in the 90s, early 90s, to early be exact. 90s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, explain a little bit about the hidden runs, and especially what was the most impacting portion of it. You know, explain what it is for those that don't know, right, right. and then what's the most impacting part of yeah, it. Yeah, the, uh, the hidden run was basically we, we got a group of rappers, a group of musicians, and out of a van, we had a generator. <laughs> like clowns out of a car, right? <laughs> and we would open up the van and we would stop on a corner, let's say Fordham Road, and, and Fordham Road right there, Webster Avenue. Really nice neighborhoods. Yeah, right? really nice neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, we go to the best neighborhoods. No, and say for real. No, what no, kind the, of the, 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 no, <laughs> we went, like, what? We went right into the hood. We went where the drug dealers were. We went where the drug spot was. Remember, I'm sorry, remember that time we went to the place that the guy, I parked my van on the corner, he was like, yo, dude. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, like he had stash under the mailbox. Right, right, right. Like, you know, that's the only parking there is. I hope we're just going to be a little bit. And then we went in front of the store and the guy was going to pull out a gun like to shoot yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of neighborhood. That's the kind of neighborhood we went to. And we love going into that. Watson, Manor, Ward, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Fordham Road, uh, 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 Grand Concourse. Concourse up and down, yeah. I mean, we hit every, every, every spot where we understood there was drugs being sold. We came in. And we came in with a group of volunteers. They gave out flyers. Then we had this one little section for like 10 minutes. We would come, we'd drop the van, open up the van, the drum would come out, Pastor Joe would bring out his drum set, I mean a one piece drum set with a cymbal. And then we would have a rapper and, an- and another guy would come out with a keyboard, zap. It was like a pop-up concert, It was like right? a pop-up <laughs> 2.5 concert second, you know? And we would come in there and, and sing two or three songs, testimony, uh, uh, of the wor- a word of encouragement, and then after that we do a short altar call. People would come by the droves. 
pray for me. Pray for a mm-hmm. guy with no t-shirt with his girl. You can tell he just got hot. Man, pray for me, man. I just finished copying, you know? Uh, I mean, people that, the unloved, the broken, mm-hmm. the, 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 the forgotten, you know, they will come all sweaty and tired. You can tell they been getting high all day. They pray for me, man. Pray for mm-hmm. me. The fatherless man, you know, fatherless kid. And after that, it was over. What was the impact? The impact was that we were able to plant the seed. Right. We were able to bring Christ into the community. Not in the church, but into the into the actual community where you would probably just walk by and say, I ain't gonna go there. I'm not, I'm not even gonna go around that neighborhood. Right. right into the heart of the belly's beast, we brought a message of hope and the word went out. Mm. And and then we gave tickets, little tickets, and it would say, you know, ten dollars, but you is for free, and then it would come out. You know, uh, there was a little, you know, the the promotion stuff, but some some of them never came to the church, but it was the impact there mm-hmm. was that they heard the gospel. The but, gospel but we, the tickets that we gave, like we put a value on the concert we were doing, exactly. although it was for free. Right. But you know, the neighborhood ain't gonna take anything that's free and exactly. value it. Right. So said, look, there's a ten dollar ticket. We give it out to free for everybody. Exactly. Just come out. And what happens? They would come out. Oh yes, they would. We would yeah. have people come out, and remember, they would stand online for blocks. Of, I never forget that first time. They were like seven or eight blocks deep. Three we blocks, like, of, three like, to four oh blocks God, around the corner. What's going on here? Right. And uh, we would we would come out while they were online and do and a little so, freestyle yeah. or whatever freestyle, with, yes. the, with the drum set and yes. stuff. And they were like, "Yeah, I remember you came to my hood. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out." And I'm like, "Wow, they're really coming back." But out of all the hidden runs, this, and this I know. This is like we're having our own show right yeah, yeah. here. It's our little moment. Give me a break, okay? We don't get to do this often. Yeah. <laughs> what was your best hit and run? What was your best location for hit and run? My best location hit and run, I think it was on uh, right off of Grand Concourse. I, I think Webster. It was a Webster. The Webster further up. I remember that we we've, we've hit or we already went to like five different places it was it was hot the sun was already setting it was towards about maybe six o'clock in the evening and we're doing our last hit and run and i remember you just came right in front of a couple i never forget the lady had a bag and you can tell that they were in a rush and you and you started by saying i know you were in a rush and i see you with the package in your bags and and i understand but i got a message for you to let you know that jesus christ is still you know as you was flowing <laughs> and i remember i just stood there and they both were mesmerized because it seemed like they needed to hear that message that day. Mm-hmm. And I remember I looked at the lady and her eyes started to tear. And then after you was finished, you know, uh, you just told her, can I pray for you? you? Ended up with the rabbi saying, can I pray for you? And I remember you said a wonderful prayer for them. And that couple ended up coming to Crossroads, you know, mm-hmm. they, they came out to the outreach. But I would never forget that day because you can see in their life, you know, just they were just going through life. Wow. You know, the daily routine. And here, God used you to interrupt mm. and step into their world for just, a, for just a split second and bring a message to the genre of hip-hop, true with passion, and it caught their attention. And they, they gave you the time to listen because they, they saw that you had something to say. Yeah, and, and that was those were some scary moments. Oh. I got up front because we were really interrupting their shopping Saturday. Yeah, yes, exactly. You know, it's yeah. 1 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. I have, you know, what I asked you for your best moment because I can't really narrow it down. I have right. like three. Yeah. One, the movie theater. Oh yes. 161st Street. Yes, yes, yes. The theater. Yeah. Where we were just sitting in the parking lot waiting for the movie to finish. Exactly. Movie's finished, guys. You ready? Be, be, be. Tuned up. They come out and bam, just exactly. hit them hard. Mm-hmm. And people train come station. out. People will come out like, what? This is crazy. 125th Street train, train station. station in the train line. station. In the train station. Underneath, it was so loud. Really? <laughs> but it was great. The train doors would open, and we would come in. God yeah. is the man. I yeah. was like, wow, what's going on here? Yeah. And people would come off the train to stay with us so we could pray for them. Yes. There was, yeah. You know, rush hour in New York, there's no delay. There is you know, no delay. Meaning, if, if, if anything's going to stop you, you're going to find a way to make it anyway. You know, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. You're not going to stay behind. Not intentionally going to get off the train and and hang out. Exactly. Not underneath in like 100 degree weather. And it was hot. It was mad hot. It was stupid hot. Yeah. (laughs) I'll never forget that. But, um, that was that was impacting, and of course Orchard Beach. Orchard Beach, oh my! What can we see? Orchard, Orchard Beach. I mean, to this day, I think of the guy Jay. that's the usher in your church, right? Jay, yes, Jay. Jay. Uh, 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 Jay, Jay Ruiz. We call him. I call, we him, call Orchard him Orchard Beach. Beach, right? I call him yeah, Orchard, Orchard Beach. Beach. This guy was wasted. Gone. He was wasted. No shirt on. All your no shirt. beer in his hands. My five like, guys, right? Yeah. With his five boys. Uh-huh. And he's like, "How are you guys doing, man?" Uh, yeah, you know, we just wrapping. His, we're about to leave. And I was like, Joe, these dudes are here. We can't stop. 
Yeah. We didn't come here with a time frame. We came here with people in mind. Yeah. And Joe was like, if you got more, let's go. And he hit the drums. And people put the keywords back together. We started rapping. I remember, i never forget, I offered them all CDs. Yeah. And there were no CDs left. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, uh, we don't have CDs. But if you come to the church Sunday morning, you see these guys here, they'll give you CDs. And they came. That's right. They that, never left. That guy, Jay. Jay. A year later, the guy became a Bible student. Wow. <laughs> Bible st scripture insider. He was a walking Bible, that gentleman. I saw him I saw him recently like at a Harvest Field event or something, and my, my eyes like warded up. I was like, I can't believe this dude is still serving God. Yeah, yeah. He was wasted. Gone. But that's just to show you the power of God's word. That's right. Nothing that I did. I did nothing. I, I was just obedient to God's call and said, y'all part of this. Let's do it. That's right. You know, and, and obedient to somebody else's obedience that's who said, right. let's do this. To somebody else's obedience exactly. who was called to do this. That's you know, right. And what, that's what I'm saying. Like, you guys, you can do this. Yes. And it's so necessary. Yes. I mean, your testimony, whatever happened in the 90s happened, or in the 80s it happened. Whatever happened to Nikki in the 50s, 60s, it happened. But things are still happening today. Yes. You know, and we have we still have like another five minutes, but you know, what trends of of violence, danger, and signs are you seeing out there that we the church should be looking for and even within our youth? Because come on, kids are in the church, they're still going through stuff, but some of the youth leaders are not relevant enough to pick it out yeah. and help them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, you, you you look at from generation to generation to generation, one of the biggest trends is that again, young people they're looking for love. Uh, the definition of love has been uh, given to them very dysfunctionally through television, mm. through different genres, but they're looking, they're, they're looking for love. And the only true love is agape love. And the church is mandated and called to bring that agape love. And, and one of the trends that we see from one generation, it doesn't change, the faces change, the names change, is the gangs. The gangs provide provides that safety and security, face-to-face, -face, close contact, where that dysfunctional love, they're more loyal to the gang members than they are in their house because they've been rejected and, and been just completely disowned by their family members. So they go to the street. And the street guy, you know, says, look, here, here's this gun. Here's this crack. Here's some money. I'm going to put food in your stomach, and I'm going to show you love, and I got your back. And this has been the most constant uh, mm -hmm. uh, a problem from generation to generation. It's in Brooklyn. It's in Bedford Stuyvesant. It's in Brownsville. It's in East, U East New York. It's in South Bronx. It's, it's in the Lower East Side. You know, these seven communities, the seven communities uh, that that we see that they come right to jail, and they come right into jail. So we need to, as a church. I think that we need to, okay, these youth are not going to come into the church. They're not going to come right. in. So I think we should develop strategies to go into the community and speak to the kid that you probably would say, I'm not going to talk to that kid. But that is the next Nikki Cruz. That, that is the next pastor that God may want to raise up. That may be the next Billy Graham. That may be the, the next Martin Luther King. That may be the next T.D. Jakes. But, you know, we have to take a step outside of mm. the four walls. And I'm, the four walls are good because we have to build and train inside the house of God because that's where you're going to get your training. But now let's take that knowledge and instead of trying to jockey for positions of, you know, when I'm going to get my turn or I'm going to get my turn, mm. which is cool, you know, because you, everybody's going to get a turn. But you got a lot of chances going right to the local park in your church. There's a local park in your church. You've passed by. God has given you that push in your heart. Stop ignoring it. Get a team together. You don't have to be out there the whole day. You don't have to beat anybody on the head with a Bible. All you got to do is get on the basketball court. Maybe right. do, maybe, maybe cook some Franks and hamburgers. You know, get a donation for $200. Put some Franks and hamburgers out there and just have a conversation. Start a dialogue with some young people. All they want is to know that you care. If you can show them relationship, they're going to listen. And now you got something to say because you earned the right to speak. You know, that's that's what I would say. Right now. Amen. That's that's awesome stuff. It's true, and you don't need to be a musician, a rapper. I mean, that's all additional. If you have yeah. it, amen. If you don't have it, don't worry. You don't need it. Right. You know, and that's what I think people get scared of. They say, "Oh, but I don't have a sound man. I don't have a rap group. I don't have an artist. I don't have a guitar player." So what? Right. You have a voice, and you have the word. That's right. And exactly. that's that's all you need. Just go out there and use that, and build a relationship with them. Listen, John is available. You know, I, I know he's busy, he has a hectic schedule, but if you contact us, we'll make sure we'll relay the message to yes. him. Uh, he's available to come maybe encourage your leaders or speak to your youth if he has to, or speak to your, your whole congregation. You know, uh, he, he loves the Lord, you can tell. He, 
I mean, if you haven't noticed that today, you have a problem. <laughs> but uh, but he lo- he definitely loves the Lord, and, and his passion is to see souls get saved. You know, so if he can be of service to your ministry or to your church or your youth leader, even to speak to your pastor or whatever as a word of encouragement, because pastors need that too sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, need somebody to say, oh, wow, yeah, we could do this. I was I lost it for a second, you know. Right. Um, Hit us up. We'll make sure we, we contact John yeah, for you, and you know we'll put him in touch, and he'll call you or email you back, and, and you dialogue with him. And if you're looking to do prison ministry, you know, we we went once, but the prisoners are still there. They're mm-hmm. there every single day. Every day. You know, and you I know you have some stuff in prison coming yeah, up yes, that you're going to yeah. be doing. Yeah, July next. July 19th, 20th, and 21st, we're going to be visiting the women. Uh, we're going to minister to them out in the yard. We got some people that are going to worship through song and testimonies of a woman who used to be a lesbian, how God turned her life around. Yeah. And wow. today God is using her in a mighty way. Uh, Thursday, uh, Friday, we got uh, Dimas, Pastor Dimas from, nice. from uh, the Bronx, Bronx, Bronx Projects. Projects, who's going to be sharing with the adolescents. And then Saturday, we're going back to C74, you know, the adolescents at war. For those that you know about C74, we're going right into the devil's nest and we're going to bring a message. And we got another speaker coming in there sharing his testimony. We're going to use sports, tug of war, relay race, uh, um, football throw, and we're going to use uh, the style of coach and coach and players. So the volunteers are going to have a role of coach, and then we bring in Franks and hamburgers, so we're going to sit down and break bread with them and, you know, fellowship with them, and then at the end, we're going to worship together with them and encourage them and remind these young people that are incarcerated that there's still a second chance and that there's always hope. It's never over as long as God is in our lives. Amen. That's awesome. And John, again, we thank you for, you know, for sharing with us. If you're out there listening, maybe you have a family member that's incarcerated, know that there's hope for them. And there's people like John reaching out to them as well. Right. You're not alone. And, you know, we're here to help. Whatever we can do to help you, let us know. If you, if you know someone that's in the prison and, and needs this kind of thing, you know, also let us know. Yes. If, if John can't, he might know somebody who, who's yeah, able to can, do yes. it, to, you mm-hmm. know, to reach out to them. And if we don't know, we can't help. Exactly. So you just got to let us know. Uh, again, bro, thanks so much. Thank you, man, Appreciate for having it. me. Uh, shout out to Crossroads Tabernacle, Pastor Joe Cortina, yes. the whole yes. staff out there. Uh, my old storytellers, peace, storytellers. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, props to all of them. Don't forget Rap Fest, the prayer walk August 4th, night before Rap Fest, August 10th at Sanctuary Fellowship, and then Rap Fest 2012. Well, August 11th at Longfellow and East 174th Street, the Pathmark Mall. Don't forget vendors. If you're out there, you can get your vendor booth by going to ratfestinc.com and clicking on the link, and it's a done deal. Uh, that's all we have. I want to leave you guys with this one more video tonight. I'm excited. This is our third good video for tonight, man. It's a good one. Uh, this one is called Down by the Breaks featuring Sean C. Johnson here on Ratfest Radio, ratfestradio.com. You will learn us because we are out of control. See you guys next week. Wait, wait, wait. Next week we have two guests. Logos Rima and Pastor Pablo Pablo Pizarro from Hip Hop Fest, which is on July 21st. That's a Saturday. It's in New Jersey. We were there last time. It was off the hook. It was good. But he's going to be here. So you can check one out next Monday. (laughs) All right, cool, man. See you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Light it up, watch it all burn down. Light it up, watch it all burn down. Light it up, watch it all burn down. Yeah. Real talk, spit yeah. truth to the I've been on the sleep with the fishes, this sick deuce, or do they just play in the sand with they boots? Who are you? I'm the silhouette that make you break your neck. Standing in the midst of flames, probably wouldn't break a sweat. Cause I'm cold like Baltimore winners. You dudes old school like lay your waist spinners. You be all out in public like stay your waist sinners. When you look into the mirror, then you feel a little tender. Yeah. Yeah, simmer down, I am where I'm found If not in a booth, six feet underground Forget that, I'm worried about now And like Pat Lentz, I'm worried about clowns I found that this life is a circus When searching for purpose Look into the eyes that birth us And not to the ones that hurt us I'm all about churches But not trying to make people feel worthless, nah Please pay for dreams Can't stand the fire They won't last what you made Light it up, watch it all burn down. Light it up, watch it all burn down. Real talk, spit truth till they lay me down. I rise up again, rise up with God, I rise up with men, stand with the fallen, we rise up with them. Let's kill death and open our eyes up again. 
not that complicated You should know that you can make it Cause I have made it But haven't arrived Got a piece for one half of the pot Only thing that matters Is what matters after we die Persecution's still alive They just be concealing it Racism ain't dead The hood's still feeling it Tripping to thinking Killing their own means killing it And the rap is glorified And everybody's feeling it So I don't really care about your swag Or pop award shows Where the divas dress and drag Rap mags consumed with fat ads If you're not entertained This is what a cash at Down, down, down like a pyro Maniac, brainiac, now found sound Pound waves, who you wait for that? Trickle down, down, ain't work What a 80s at, 80s baby But I can't spit you a 80s rap Cause it sound now too basic to play me back Chillin' with my lady at Insane brain, gotta spit another crazy rap They hollin' no snitchin' But they livin' like a rabies rap Huh? Still chasing that cheese While the real men stay raising their seeds What matters most when it's all said and done And the legacy you want and what your name becomes These paper dreams can't stand the fire They won't last what you made it go So light it up, watch it all burn down Light it up, watch it all burn down Light it up, watch it all burn down Real talk, spit truth till they lay me down These paper dreams can't stand the fire